Is that right, Ra Weary? Isn't, in fact, Aotearoa the number one te reo word in common use that has been mangled and bastardised? Honestly, mate, according to my research and that of others, it is. But before we get into the history of the word Aotearoa and the debate as to whether to include it on, on par with the term New Zealand, it is pertinent, one thinks, to first take a look at the larger external overview on the subject. Look at other countries who have changed their names in order to get a bit of guidance with other domains that have successfully transited from old to new, combined old and new and in between. The list of countries that have changed their names within living memory is rather considerable. It's not at all an unusual occurrence to adopt traditional names and drop colonial ones, particularly in parcel with independence. Here are a few examples. Burma became Myanmar in 1989. That name means the strong. Belize was known as British Honduras until independence in 1981. The Mayan term Belize translates roughly as muddy waters. A year prior and closer to home, the New Hebrides also became independent and renamed itself Vanuatu. The new name we know today is the Melanesian term for our land forever. 1972 was when Ceylon became Sri Lanka, resplendent island. 71 saw East Pakistan become Bangladesh, the land of the Bengal. Zimbabwe translates as House of Stone. Thailand the land of the three. By now you get the picture. The new name represents the universal embodiment of the country. Their diverse cultures, religions and geographic regions. A task made harder in say a place like Myanmar with eight different ethnic groups or Vanuatu with 13 major islands and over a hundred local dialects. Underlying this delicate decision-making process was the need to be inclusive. The complete opposite to the name proposed for New Zealand. You would be hard pushed to find a less inclusive name for a country than naming it after the second to largest island. From my research on this, it's not even debatable. Historically, Aotearoa means the North Island. Nor am I alone asserting this. I am an illustrious company. Every time someone employs the word, they are saying wittingly or unwittingly, North Island. Every time you see the word in writing, you are in fact reading North Island. Aotearoa is not the traditional word for New Zealand. In 1840, when 40 chiefs and 500 of their fellow iwi signed the Treaty of Waitangi, the term for New Zealand was New Tirani. Not a single mention Aotearoa by any of the signatories. I can't imagine, for starters, Naitahu being too keen on putting their moniker on a treaty if it did. The first two earliest married to English dictionaries in the Christchurch Library I could get my mitts on, and that's where I did the majority of my research here, are these. A 60-something-year-old reprint of the William Williams from 1844, and that was the first married dictionary to English, full stop, which doesn't even have a listing for the word. And the next was an original Colenso from 1898, which states what I am asserting. Aotearoa equals North Island. Interesting in other historic books, the ones that are so precious you have to sign in and wear gloves to turn the pages, Aotearoa pops up as a North Island place name as well. 
there was, as far as I can tell, no traditional name for the entire country. The first one I found was Nukuroa, N-U-K-U-R-O-A. Then the trail ran cold on that word. Go online and research the subject and you will get different modern etymological interpretations. Emphasis on the word modern. It is easy to find a website that will support your argument, mostly without historic basis. Not, say, a book written in the 19th century. More so, now this has become a politically charged issue and not simply a matter of whether it is true or not. Very few online sources keep the linguistic faith. The Maori Dictionary Online is a rare exception. They call it the way I see it. Therefore, if I am wrong, so are they. The original true meaning has all but been airbrushed out of modern publications. What the Mary Party accurately call bastardisation. We only need to take a look inside some of the contemporary Mary dictionaries on the shelves of the Christchurch Library to view the sea change. There's plenty of them, as you can see. Over the last few decades, the name for the North Island has adopted a lesser used traditional name. Scrubbed out and unfairly replaced by Aotearoa to fit in to the modern narrative. Yet the traditional names for the South Island of Stuart and the Chathams have been left untouched. All this now brings me to my two chief gripes outside their irrefutable origins. These are, number one, there's no escaping Aotearoa is not a good choice for a Maori name for the entire country. That's because it's exclusory. Number two, who the hell decided this term should be plastered about the country without consultation? Why should South Islanders, for example, travel around the world with a passport that indicates to the world they are citizens of the North Island? Why do the residents of Invercargill have to sing a national anthem that literally translates as Defend North Island? So, before New Zealanders even grapple with the thorny issue of changing the name of the country, or giving this particular word equal status, before we started to use the word in our anthem, we really need or needed to discuss if Aotearoa is or was suitable to start with. Then if there is a groundswell for change, one I have missed, and a symbolic Te Reo name is what the country really wants, find one we can really all embrace. I've already shown you this is possible from overseas examples. As a born and bred mainlander, fourth generation Kiwi, unsurprisingly I can't embrace the one on the table. I don't identify as a North Islander. For the first time after 90 odd videos, I've decided to turn off the comments on this one. This is primarily a history site and I can't be arsed indulging in debating a topic that is now both politically and emotively charged. Go on Facebook if you want to rant. Better still, do your own YouTube if you have a contrary information as opposed to just an opinion. I also have other projects I prefer to move on to. Give the video a dislike if it makes you feel better. It still won't change the facts as we know them. Aotearoa is not the traditional Maori word for New Zealand. Aotearoa equals North Island, and Aotearoa is a divisive choice. Oh yeah. Last and not least, and before I forget, were you aware that at one stage Australia was called New Zealand? No bull. Tika, which uh, means true in Te Reo. A link to my video on that subject is in the description. Mihi mihi to my subscribers. Hairi ra, and I will spot you next time.